pretty good day in the metagame that we've seen. I know Daryl Ayers also playing the same deck. Their team six and one. It's your standard good stuff deck involving, but instead of playing Delvers, you're playing Baleful Strixes and then Renin Six. Right, those Jace the Mind Sculptor, etc. Yeah. Will Pulliam, a w open winner in a modern open here on the SCG Tour. That was with Amulet Titan in Charlotte last year. He'll be on the draw against Ben Reagan. It's always so scary when your opponent plays a Tron land and no spell on one. Yeah. because <laughs> 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 Like, oh, no map. No, no, just Tron. Okay, that's neat. Welding Jar and well, Sorcerer Spyglass. And yep, just has Tron. But fortunately for Will, it's not Tron into... Maybe fortunately or uh, unfortunately. I was say, fortunately it's not Tron into Karn, but I guess Spyglass would deal with that. This is a lot harder to no, deal with. No, Reality Smash. Yeah, this is Tron into Reality Smasher or Tron into Matter Reshaper Thought Nasir. The name here, Karn the Great Creator. Thought not seer from Ben. We get to see what Will's hand is. Inventor's Fair, Witchbane Orb Academy Ruins, Simeon Spirit Guide Narset. That's the, that's the other spells. So with the mono blue deck, what's he trying to set up here in the early game? Basically, what he's trying to do is unload his hand, put an ensnaring bridge into play, and then close off the avenues that Reagan can interact with that ensnaring bridge. This, we see Welding Jar as a prime sure. example of that. It kind of plays at both ends. It both gets a card out of the hand and it protects the ensnaring bridge. All right, so by taking Narset, that stops Will from finding the bridge. Correct. Narset is also just something that helps Pulliam find more things that lock the game down. Mox Opal, the draw for Pulliam. Almost enough land. I, at some point he will try to crack Inventor's Fair to get in Staring Bridge and cast it, but I don't know if he has enough turns to do that. Right. Reality Smasher in particular is just going to slam the door shut so quickly. See Karn the Great Creator, Ben, of course. Right, the turn after it was Spyglass, he drew a copy. Wow, that's a good Spyglass. <laughs> nice card. Sees right into the top of the library sometimes. But with the Reality Smasher, we know Ben has two. This is still an attack for 12, and next turn will be 17. Maybe it doesn't matter. This is a spot where, in Reagan's spot, I'm, I'm pretty interested in just playing the Smasher. Oh, yeah. We're not blocking. <laughs> <laughs> Has Walking Ballista alongside it. Could play that on one mana with the leftover Power Plant. No more lands. Is there anything he's thinking about? What is, what's the worry here with so much this kind of mana open from Will Pulliam? So the thing that you would be worried about in this spot, I actually believe you know his entire hand because he drew the Mox Opal for a turn. But you could be trying to play around something like War of Invention. And then from there, if there's a War of Invention coming, you would want to go ahead and try to just have this Walking Ballista developed so you could actually make something out of it, being able to get a counter before a Sorcerer Spyglass hits the table, for example. Reagan Reality smashes the play. And swing is for 12. Pulling him to 8. Perfect information on Reagan's side. I suppose the other option is he can still cast Karn the Great Creator. Even though it, it's been spyglassed, it still has the ability that Will can't use his artifact's abilities. Correct. So that would turn off Mox Opal, Welding Jar, and so on. Right. That's the biggest worry with things like Spyglass against Karn the Great Creator specifically. But as it stands, Will cannot get the Ensnaring Bridge fast enough. He'd have to draw it this turn. He can whir well, into it. Right, if he draws a land or a zero mana artifact, then he can whir into it. 
Uh, wait, he had the Simeon oh. Spirit Guide. Hold on. He did have the mana for it. And that gets ensnaring bridge. And maybe that is part of the thought here then. Maybe that's why Ben wanted to think about this. If he plays Karn the Great Creator, then Will would need to draw a land to cast the bridge. Which he has. No, he has Academy Runes. There's no way around it. So gets the damage in while he can. Here's ensnaring bridge. Two cards in hand. So that Ballista still can walk across the bridge for one more turn. Right, and that's the nice thing about the card is even no matter how big Ballista gets, Reagan has the ability to shrink it and then grow it after the attacks are declared. And I like this a lot. A power plant drawn by Reagan. So he can attack, grow it to a 3-3, deal 3, and then next turn will be lethal. Right, and there's even a spot where, because of that opal, the welding jar, and so on, he may be interested in just attacking for two with Ballista and then casting the corn this turn. Right. I don't think that costs him any time on, the clo on his clock. No. Heads up play here on Ben's side, Reagan's side. So, swings in with the Ballista. The four blocks. Looks like he's just going to pump it to a 3-3. Three, three. Yep, make it big. So, Will takes three. Next turn, two more counters. Remove all five. That'll send it to game two. Will does have Witch Bane Orb, but Ballista can actually deal with this. Right, it ends up being a complicated spot in which he casts the Witchbane Orb, then Reagan responds and shoots Will down to three, and then untaps, attacks for one with the Ballista, grows it after no blocks are declared, and so on. Right. In response to the Witchbane Orb. This is Witchbane Orb on the stack. Ballista shoots Will down to one. He, Ben's got to see the line, but it is there. Will to three. Will, one card, but he can't get uh, rid of that. If he could get rid of that last card in his hand, yep. he'd have a way out. But down to three, a swing in with one across the bridge, pumps it to a 3-3. Three, three. Ben finds the line, and with it, he finds the win. Right there, Pulliam really needed to find a zero-mana artifact in order to empty his hand completely for that ensnaring bridge. And if he can do that, that actually is pretty close to a lock because Witch Bane Orb means you can't shoot damage upstairs either. Exactly. That would be a very, very close version of how that could have gone. Little peek into our legacy around there. Yeah, Alex Rubin and Aiden Breyer, that was the one match still underway in game one. Ben's teammate Nicholas also takes game one with Boros Feather. It's kind of deck that Jun Dinosaurs might actually struggle with. God's Willing is a heck of a card. And they don't, that's not a particularly good deck at dealing with flyers, so Feather can get in there uncontested. Exactly, and I could very easily see Dreadhorde Arcanist running away with things if you can just check the dorks from the Dinosaurs deck. So looking at the sideboard, Ben Reagan's sideboard, as we've seen with Eldrazi Tron earlier today, doesn't have too many options because it has a Karn Wishboard in it. Right. This is a spot where Leyland is the only thing you could really think of wanting to put in because it does make Academy Ruins much, much worse. But other than that, you're not really looking to change the formula very much. In the main deck, something like All is Dust is likely to just be blank cardboard against ben, against Polyam, rather. So I could see Reagan looking to cut that card specifically. But anything past that, you probably just don't want to mess with your formula too much. Even something like Dismember is going to have text because it has the ability to kill something like Urza out of Pulliam's sideboard if Reagan anticipates Pulliam leaning into a more creature-oriented plan. Wheel side. Biggest thing he has in his sideboard are three copies of Urza Lord High Artificer. Gives him a second way to win the game. But in this matchup, I'm not... Sure, that's where he wants to play. No, the one thing that Ursa does right is that it just makes a big blocker. Right. And this is go this might sound silly, but making a six six against Eldrazi <laughs> is incredible. Yeah, their deck really tops out at five five, so it can make that construct token. 
Exactly. That's that's the biggest draw to the card. It's not necessarily any of the activated abilities on it, but it just being a 4-mana 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven is a fairly effective sideboard card from, against a deck that's ultimately just trying to play 4-4-5-5 four, four, five, five tribal. I wonder the neat thing about the mono blue deck. So we, we saw some is it decks out of Brad Carpenter earlier t today, and their win con was sort of the meek Thopter Foundry. Will has a much more interesting one. If you're familiar with the card, Teferi's Puzzle Box. Well, 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 well. That card's pretty great with Narset. So right. Narset you, is something that doesn't allow you to draw more than one card per turn. But then Teferi's Puzzle Box reads, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards from their hand on the bottom of their library in any order and then draws that many cards. That happens after you have drawn your card for the turn because of how the rules of magic work. So right. what that effectively means is you draw a card for a turn and then you put it on the bottom of your library and you smile and you tell your opponent that they may have their turn now. Right, so the idea with the puzzle box in, a, in the Ferris deck is that you get a new hand of that many cards each turn. You just, you know, you always, your hand just keeps changing. But this lock means you just don't get a hand. Right. You, stop, the, you don't draw cards. The fair version of it sounds like a card that would be called Puzzle Box. Yeah. It just sounds fun, right? Like you're actually playing a game, and then Narset comes in and reminds you very, in no uncertain terms, that magic is not a game and no one is allowed to have fun. See, that's way meaner than I remember Puzzle Box being. See, back in the day, you'd play it with Underworld Dreams. Well, and that's... Then, and that would be, oh, that was your combo deck. But at least I let you draw the cards. But that's a game. Right. That still feels like a game to me. It's just... <laughs> There's a big difference between doing something effective and fast and powerful and just telling your opponent, as a matter of fact, you can't play. Uh, Mag Magic's a zero sum game, and I plan to play it by myself. Thank you for sitting here and watching. We have a chance to check out the sale at StarCityGames.com. Currently, we have thousands of HP cards on sale on our website. See, they're heavily played cards. You can get tournament staples at discount prices. We have them on the site starcitygames.com slash sale. That will be going on all the way through this weekend. So we talked about Mind Over Matter being a combo card. All four of these are combo cards, right? You look at Phyrex someone starts with Phyrexian Dreadnought, and you never think, wow, what 12 power did they sacrifice? And just to be clear, HP cards, you can actually still play in tournaments. These aren't damaged cards. These are Correct. just cards that have been used previously. Exactly. These are all, honestly, <laughs> I built a lot of my modern collection off of just the HP case at our yeah. events from SCG going, oh, you know, I would love to get this card for about half of what it normally sells for. It plays the same, and I just want to play Magic. I plan on putting some wear on it anyway. Exactly. We'll on a six-card hand here for the second game. Sometimes with an Ensnaring Bridge deck, that's not even a bad thing. No. The, if Will had one less card in his hand last game, he would have won. Right. Got to intentionally mulligan. That's the trick. It's the strat. With the London mulligan, especially in these decks, it really isn't a drawback for to mulligan. Turn two, Simeon Spirit Guide, Psy Master Thopterist. And let me get things moving. Whenever he casts an artifact, he gets a Thopter, and then he'll make Mox Opal. Polymus decided that he is going to attack now. If he has something like an Urza in his hand, he might just go off from here and actually kind of just spin the novel, or excuse me, the narrative of the matchup. Gets a Thopter, follows up with Sorcerer's Spyglass, and you're absolutely right. In his hand, his last card is one of his three Urzas out of the sideboard. He could just go beat down this game. Ooh. And Tron is going to be set up for Ben Reagan. Easiest walking ballista name well, of Pulliam's entire life. Yeah, the two ballistas, and Ben's about to untap with a bunch of mana. I'd prefer to not lose the Psy immediately. So I think he'll name Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista being a 6-mana 3-3 three three is considerably worse than that card's text yeah. normally reads. 
That's going to leave Ben without too many ways to answer these creatures. Maybe should have just registered Endless One instead. It would have been an Eldrazi and everything. It would have been twice the size. It's value is what that is. So Ben, no shortage of mana. He needs bigger things to do with it. I'm looking for cards like, do you have Endbringer? His one Endbringer. This is a spot where we might just see Reagan develop two mana reshapers and cast an expedition map. Because if you know you can't activate your copies of Walking Ballista anyway, you really just want to spend, you know, 10 mana on them and make them a 5-5 five five instead of 6 to make them a 3-3. Three three. Yeah, it is actually an interesting situation for Ben. A lot... In this situation, you'd want Dex to have a Sweeper, but remember, his Sweeper is all his Dust and Walking Ballista, so he doesn't really have a Sweeper anymore. Right, and this is the spot where you can expect him to have taken those out, and we see Ugin the Ineffable, one of the other removal spells for Regan. That cannot destroy Colorless Permanence. Urza, Lord High Artificer from Will. Five five tribal online. On the other side of the battlefield. Yeah, field. just bring some beatdowns. Makes the construct token. That is a five five currently. Wow, I see you on the table it's and great. I hear it's you great. in my headset. I'm just moving very quickly. I'm experiencing life in stereo. I understand why you shuffle the deck when you activate Urza here, but okay. it almost feels like a thing you could shortcut, like Mind's Desire. That five mana from Urza. Shuffle your library, then exile the top card. Until end of turn, you may play it without paying its mana cost. I do like that activation. Phyrexian Processor? Is that it's temporal, temporal Aperture. Temporal Aperture. There we go. A processor did a similar thing, but different. Urza's just three cards stapled yeah. together. It is the Karn Struct, since Urza built Karn originally. It is Tolarian Academy, and it is Temporal Aperture. And it's Horn Turtle. <laughs> the most important Because he's piece riding of the Horn puzzle. Turtle. <laughs> His trusty mount. Here I was thinking those were legs under him the whole no, time. No, it's Horn Turtle. Magic arts come a long <laughs> way. Back to Ben. Gonna crack map, continue to develop his mana. He can make some large walking ballistas here. I don't think he has ways to knock that Ooh, up. Blast Zone. Okay, Blast Zone. That's a way to get... That can unlock Spyglass. Right. Rather quickly, actually. Right. And that's what he's going to do. He wants those ballistas back online. He's, he's basically identified that the way he loses this game is if this Urza is left unchecked. Right. There are just so many cards that these two legendary creatures are going to produce on their own. And... Traditionally, the Eldrazi Tron deck kind of just assumes it can go over the top of anything else on the battlefield. That's the plan it's playing to. So when you can't do that, you need to find a way to get out on the battlefield and stop what the other player is doing. He'll be able to put Blast Zone to two this turn, sacrifice it next turn, and then start going to work with Walking Ballistas. Thinking right now if he wants to just play one of them, but he can only make it for one, unless he wants to tap the Blast Zone. Besides, that's not worth it. He needs them both to be yep. large. Really, really just want to get this Sorceress Spyglass off the table as soon as possible. See, Aperture again.
Top card is Ghost Oh, Horn. that's a hit. Oh, wow. That's the answer to wow, the last wow, zone. Wow, 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 wow. Good That was grief. a really good draw for Will. Swing here. And you see Will does not want to, to hit one of those Mattery Shapers. He doesn't want them turning into something he can't deal with. Yeah, this is kind of the prison game plan. It's most of a lock here where the lock is you can't do anything with creatures right. on the battlefield. Ben goes with the blast on activation. Will will ghost quarter it. Turn that into some wastes. Thought not seer the pickup for Reagan, but with Pulliam not casting anything last turn, it's hard not to imagine it's not a land in, in Pulliam's hand. There is Thought Not Seer. And Will's actually pausing, so maybe it's something he can cast here. He could make... Uh, or it's just it was a land, I believe. We just, while off camera, he flashed a land in his hand. Right. Now walking Ballista on two from Reagan. With the one blast zone... Gone. Now, Ben actually does play a second Blast Zone, so he could perhaps go find it. He's not out of ways to answer the Spyglass. Five mana from Will. Goes back to work with Urza. Mox Opal just giving a free Thopter over there. <laughs> Not too bad. No big deal. Another Urza. Well, that would make another Construct, so might as well cast it. Now we're just really in stereo. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the original mono blue kill condition. Mono blue prison kill this condition. Ip Rivulet? Classic, modern staple. Oh, Ip wow. New Rivulet. That is a one of. I like that. Kill people with Crucible Ip New Rivulet. And Ben the, does not feel like he can come back from this anymore. He picks up cards and they will shuffle up for game three. Right. That was basically at the point where even if Ben draws the blast zone, it's going to take another turn or two for him to do anything against what Polium has. And that's just not that's not realistic when Polium's drawing minimum three up to six or seven cards a turn. And Will was really showing off there something you had mentioned, where Urzas could come in out of the sideboard just because make a 6-6 six, six is a very good strategy against Eldrazi Tron. Exactly. And, you know, Polium really wants to get things like Chalice of the Void out of his deck anyway, because other than Expedition Map, that's not really countering anything from Rankin. No. When both players are a 4 -arc 4x Chalice of the Void deck. It's usually bad in both decks. Yeah, exactly. And there's a point where Reagan might be interested in having it on something like Zero. Sure. Just to tag, say, Welding Jar, Mox Opal, etc. But other than that, you just really don't like Chalice of the Void very much. The key difference is that Polium has a much bigger sideboard where Reagan has a Wish board and five other cards. Going over to Standard for Game 3. This is Nicholas Del Valle versus Robert Stanley. It's another Jun Dinosaurs deck. He actually managed to even things up against Boros Feather, but is facing down a trio of Dreadhorn Arcanists. Tomic Distinguished Advocist. 11 and 10, so a close one between the two. Nicholas appears to be out of cards in hand. But he still has a God's Willing left over in his graveyard. Well, that can make one Dreadhorde Arcanist kind of unblockable. Yeah, he's got a lot to fight through here. Five-card hand for Robert Stanley. Odepec Huntmaster is going to be the first play. It's a 1-2, so it can block. Tomic, 2-3 flying. That's going to be good for some damage. So on Nicholas's side we go. 
one of the best things that Tomic has going for it in this matchup is it's able to attack through basically everything, just by virtue of being a flyer. Yeah, there's not too many ways that Jun can answer that. Nicholas scries a card to the bottom with his temple. That was the draw for the turn. He's back to being empty-handed. He either swings the flyer or swings the team. Here, I would lean towards swinging the team. Your draw steps are so much weaker than the what's basically a half ramp, half mid range deck. You need to get the game over as fast as possible. Yeah. Commune with dinosaurs. You see, Robert showed that. Yeah, it f apparently found a Regisaur Alpha not too long ago. That was a uh, last turn he cast it. Right. And that would be seven damage coming on the way back just from the Registor Alpha and the token. You think it's suspicious then? You have to think on Nicholas's side, why didn't he cast Registor Alpha? Why did he go for Odapek instead? Yeah, that one's pretty tough. You have to imagine that there's probably some sort of instant to the effect of cast down out of Stanley's hand. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, regard whatever it is. Tomek, 2-3 flyer, has the ability to say hate card against lands. Lands in the battlefield and graveyards can't be target of spells or abilities. People, opponents can't play lands from the graveyards. Nice effect that thing has. Turns off Nissa, who shakes the world. Right. So, an attack here. God's willing on the Dreadhorde Arcanist. Looks Nicholas hoping to deal three here. That's going to work. Protection from red. Scries one, and that one is to the bottom. And now we see... Noxious Grasp, that was the instant we're talking about, and that takes care of Tomic. Robert only takes one damage. Now he looks to attack back Collision, Ooh. Colossus, Regisaur Alpha. A lot of powerful stuff. Colossus is pretty close to a ritual with Galta in hand. That's really good. If he can get that Galta onto the board, we'll see. Here's Regisaur Alpha. It's a ton of power. <gasps> Gives the Regisaur Everything's going to have trample? Swing. We'll check here. So the token already has trample. Regisaur does not. So it's seven power worth of trample. They swing in. He doesn't... He doesn't look like he had the mana to cast Colossus. Right, right, right. Yeah, you need red-green specifically for that. And this may be a specific quote-unquote mistapping in order to try and throw Duvall off the scent if Stanley didn't actually have lethal that previous turn. One draw from Nicholas passes back. And now he's got to somehow figure out a way to survive this turn. And here's Galta. And Plains isn't going to do it. Robert picks up the win. So standard finishes. Jun Dinosaur is the winner. Robert Stanley the winner. And that's our first result. Which means Will Pulliam and Ben Reagan, if Pulliam can get a win, that'll be the match. On Legacy, we actually see things evened up there. Alex Rubin picks up a win. Down to the wire. These players want the win so bad. Yeah, it's just going to come down to which team can win more game threes. Stanley gets the first. We'll go to the second. This time it's Ben's turn to be on a six-card hand. Of all the decks that tend to mulligan well, ones with Tron lands are up there. Yeah. As long as Tron's in your opener, it's pretty good. We've seen both games from Ben. He has had cards in his opener that he never got around to casting. Right, exactly. Now this one, Ben, is actually on a mulligan to five. See a couple Tron lands peeking out there. Top card is Urza's Tower. And on Will's side. Oh, he did an upkeep mission. Okay, I was activation. wondering if he missed it because for a okay. second there, it looked like he might. It did, yeah. 
I actually like that if you don't care when it is, do it on your opponent's turn because I'm very, I'm a lot better at remembering triggers on my own upkeep than my opponent's upkeep. Right, and there's also a point where if it turns out Reagan has something like Simeon Spirit Guide, he gets to hide the card from a Thought Knot Seer if there's an Eldrazi Temple coming from Reagan as well. And I love this from Will. He actually, Simeon, yeah, he Spirit Guides out the temp, the Brit, the Ensnaring Bridge just to avoid that. Right. And so now it's in play. He takes one, but with a bridge on the board. Reagan would need a Blast Zone to answer it, and his hand is, is far worse than that. It looks like it's Reality Smasher and two copies of Dismember. Oof. And we just see Polium here doing whatever he can to empty his hand. Narset. Now, he has four cards in hand. He could fail to find here. But if he finds a zero-mana artifact... Okay, that's just great. Oh, yeah. That, okay, fine. Welding Jar just seems perfect. This is what we in the biz call the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now <gasps> hold on, reality. We have Smash Tron. We Tron, have Tron on mine. Okay, we have ten mana. He could cast whatever he whatever wants. He wants. <laughs> I mean the best thing is probably just to pump up this walking blister, right? A reality smasher probably can't attack anymore. I believe Pulliam's on four cards in hand. I feel like what he needs to do is get this Narset off the board as soon as possible. Because the card that beats him at this point is Sporcer Spyglass. Yep. Just Spyglass the Ballista, then you're good. Yep. So he does that. He takes care of Narset. Back to Will. Finds Blast Zone. Blast Zone can't answer Ballista because it starts at one. Ballista has a converted mana cost zero. And here's the other side of Ensnaring Bridge. It looks like Pulliam's drawn a few lands, and you can't play more than one of those a turn, no matter right. how much mana you have. So he could struggle to just empty his hand here, and l this Walking right. Ballista gets to keep chipping away for three. Let's see how many cards you have in Will's hand. Ben would like to get another attack in before he starts cranking up the Ballista. It looks like four cards in hand for Will. Just goes to attack. He says, sure. No blocks. Sure. 11 mana for Ben. O two activations. Almost three. He'll pump it twice to a 5-5. Five, five. He's going, all right, well, technically I'll activate it once. Then if that resolves, I'll do it again. Yeah. Here's one. Here's two. Will takes five. Says go, but there's a whir of invention. That's a way to find Sorcerer's Spyglass. He'll crank up Blast Zone instead. Now the Ballista's at five. Will can't do anything. Will won't be attacked anymore. Here's Mistress Bauble. Yeah, it is looking at whir of invention. He may be considering if he just wants to get Witchbane Orb instead. That's not too bad. And you're right. X equals four looks to be the tap. So Witchbane Orb might be the safer option. Gives him self hexproof. That prevents things like Thought Knot Seer from also taking the other card in his hand. Ben looking at a couple of dismembers and a Reality Smasher says, yeah, that's good. Which member? Uh... The, the first and second cards. <laughs> How could you do this to me? <laughs> I don't understand. Dismember. Oh, okay. Sometimes you just try to set someone up for an alley-oop and you just chuck the basketball I, into the you, crowd. <laughs> <laughs> throw up an alley-oop and the person says man that shot really wasn't on target <laughs> that's crazy I'm going to try to aim for the backboard next time yeah you'd have better luck there <laughs> word of invention in response Ben shoots three times if he's worried about Witchbane Orb he has to use the ballista right now exactly and 
he probably assumes the only way he's actually winning this game is if Polium gets stuck with two cards in his hand and right. he actually gets to try and close the door before then. So Will actually got Sorcerer Spyglass instead of Witchbane Orb. Maybe the Witchbane Orb's in the sideboard? Or this is just kind of a swerve where it let Polium actually call something different now. Okay. Or just get something different. Spyglass is naming Walking Ballista. Ooh, Reagan drew one of his best possible draws here in Endbringer. Right, so Endbringer is another card that can deal damage without attacking. Right, and it's going to deal up to two a turn, and Polium does not have much life to work with here. No, he's at nine. If he can find an Inventor's Fair, that'll slow the Endbringer down. If he finds a bunch of mana, this Blast Zone could get charged up to six. I guess over a couple of turns, he could bring Blast on to six. So let's see. We, I believe he has another land in his hand. So if he finds a Mox Opal, that puts it up to five. Yeah, otherwise it would be two turns, right? You tap a turn, a turn to put it to four, a turn to put it to six, and a turn to crack it. Right. Instead he goes for another Ensnaring Bridge and a land. So... This isn't actually much slower. He can still bring Blast Zone up to three this turn. Right, and this does buy time against Walking Ballista. So do you think in Ben's spot, is it best here to start drawing cards with Endbringer or to just start pinging? It depends how many outs that you have in your deck. And taking a glance at Ben's list, I would be inclined to just start sending it upstairs unless you really think that something like Karn the Great Creator is going to get it done. Yeah, that would be the question, right? He has four copies of Karn the Great Creator, and finding any one of them would be pretty good here. He might, it might be better odds for him to try to find one as opposed to shooting. I, I think it's interesting to see which way Ben plays it. Right, and the big thing there is that Ben would want to try to just Karn Mycosynth Lattice. Right, and then there's no coming back. Will's done. Correct. So, you know, honestly, it may just be better to draw the cards instead. Yeah, I think because he also can draw to two blast zones, I like drawing cards slightly more. The Just the fail case is a bit better, but it's really, it's they're both interesting, and both could work. Well, the issue with blast zone is Welding Jar has it checked. You're right. Okay, so you can't, that's not really an out. Looks like he's going to start by drawing a card. At the very least, the first card draw is fine because Will's life total is odd. Correct. Thought not here. Takes a glance at the last card in Will's hand. Guy Reach Sanitarium. I don't think Will wants to activate that here. No, probably not. Yeah, that's... Unless he finds Narset. Then it's a nice one. Oh, that's another lock, isn't it? <laughs> this Nar this Narset card Activate. is really mean. Narset would also be. And see, I just wanted to play Gaia Reach Sanitarium with McGrim. And it looks like Instep Polium chose to go ahead and bobble Reagan, so he's looking for something. Now there's the Sanitarium, and just to pass here on Will's side, he does. He's, he continues to have mana to bring Blast Zone to six. It looks like he's still prioritizing just casting whatever he draws. Right. He doesn't want this Walking Bliss to get extra attacks in. But time is ticking. That Endbringer just continues to draw cards. Another one's Ghost Quarter. This That's is a, a good fine one against the Blast Zone. Right, that'll protect the Endbringer. We saw that the other way last game. Right, Will actually found the Ghost Quarter to deal with Reagan's Blast Zone. So, Mindstone, cast and sacrifice. Ben here. Another card. This one's with Endbringer. 
draws a third dismember. That's Which all member? three. The newest one. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to get you one of these days. Last one to four. That's going to get Ghost Quarter. And the reason Reagan's choosing to pull the trigger here is because Polium would have the ability to try and just destroy Thought Not Seer with Blast Zone later on, which would net Polium a card. Right. Will side. He's going to use Guy Reach Sanitarium. Oh. And now Bottled Cloister. The rare here from original Ravnica. His hand is exiled on Ben's turn and then comes back on his own turn and he draws an additional card. Hello, Ensnaring Bridge. Yeah, now he has a zero card hand for the rest of the game, so certainly no attacks. Well, he's a zero card hand during Ben's, during Ben's combat turn. Step. Blast zone drawn from Ben. He wants more. Continues to draw cards on the end step with Endbringer. Bobble checks the top card. It's another walking ballista. That's no good. So, more work from Endbringer. Ben draws another card. Looking for Karn. Finds Expedition Map. That's close. So two blast zones ch answers the ensnaring bridges. If he finds both blast zones, he can set them both on three. With the amount of mana his deck has, could do it almost instantly. Right, you just, so this one Urza's tower is a casting crack of an expedition map. Then we have another tower, plus the rest of Tron, plus a land, is certainly enough mana to put the counters on the first blast zone. Maybe you can see that expedition map is cast. And one thing I wonder about what Polium's doing with his deck is it looks like he may have boarded Psy and Urza back out for this game. Yeah, he hasn't seen any of them yet. Right, and we see these just dismembers kind of rotting in Reagan's hand. So it's a little bit of a swerve on Polium's side of the battlefield. Teleria West found for Polium. That's going to be a tutor here. It can find Mox Opal, Mishra's Bobble, Welding Jar, any of the lands in the deck. And another copy of Welling Jar is going to completely ruin this Blast Zone line. Right, that'll get him back on Karn the Great Creator. Looks like he finds Inventor's Fair with it, so he wants to chain this to an artifact. So an artifact you have in mind. Maybe Puzzle Box, if he has the Narset. Right, it could also be another copy of Sorceress Spyglass. Take care of Endbringer. Inbringer, it could take care of the other Blast Zone. A lot of mana for Ben. End step going to sacrifice. Expedition map. Getting that other Blast Zone, we believe. Checked out some other options, but it will be the Blast Zone. Still has a mana floating. Plenty of mana here to draw a card with Endbringer. Put some counters on Blast Zone. Blast Zone up to a 3-3, and Endbringer can draw. Still two mana left over. Draws another Expedition map. Ben has, has so many cards in his hand. Right. He still just hasn't found that Karn. Liquid Metal Coating. And this is likely an example of something that Ben brought in his deck because he had so many dead cards and didn't think he would ever actually grab it with Karn the Great Creator that he might as well just put it in his deck. Right. If you have a Karn, it can turn off something like Blast Zone. Still, Ben continues to look. Uh, just under seven minutes left in the round. Blast zone is the play for land. Already one blast zone set up to deal with the ensnaring bridges. 
almost a bit surprised that he went for three as opposed to just setting the blast zones on two for Sorceress Spyglass. Right, that one's a little surprising. The big thing here is you want to make sure you're just answering multiple permanents a lot of the time against the artifact decks. You just want to get as much cardboard off the table as possible because the way the prison deck works is basically just leaning on having a ton of redundancy on the battlefield so it's not possible for the other player to break out. So trading your blast zone for just a welding jar may not be worth it. Now we'll see what the big finish here was for Will. He transmuted Teleria West for Inventor's Fair, and Inventor's Fair is getting Sorcerer's Spyglass. This looks like it was the answer he wanted for Endbringer, but if he puts both Spyglasses on the table, Ben can put this Blast Zone to two and do some work. Another thing that Pulliam could have tried there is getting Academy Ruins to try and just go for the lockout with Welding Char. And we do have an update which might mean this game does not finish. On the legacy table, Aiden Breyer picks up the win over Alex Rubin. And that should be the match win for Breyer, Pulliam, and Stanley. We will confirm that here. This one getting pretty close. This ghost quarter checking the other blast zone is colossal. So pick up of the pace here. We're going to finish out the game. So Blast Zone cracked on three. One ensnaring bridge was saved with Welding Jar. Tapped due to regenerate. Uh, but doesn't it doesn't turn off when tapped? Uh, it's removed from combat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a continuous artifact. So, you know, if they tap them, they don't work. Well, I don't believe... It, is it continuous or is it a mono artifact? No, something? no, it's not a mono it's artifact. It's not a mono artifact? No. Sorry, that's a little before my time. Now, so there's mono artifacts, poly artifacts, and continuous artifacts. What was George Washington like in high school? You know, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will's deck's heavy on the continuous artifacts. Another Teleria West from Pulliam. Second Spyglass was naming Endbringer, so we have one on Ballista, one on Endbringer. At some point, you wonder whether Ben's just going to go upstairs with the Sendbringer. Or once you're on the well, card drawing line, you're, you're in? Right, and now that there's a Spyglass on the other Endbringer, that's... Oh, right, he can't do it. Now he's just drawing a card. Yeah, now he just gets to draw a card each turn. This Ghost Quarter is checking the Blast Zone. Except Blast Zone goes to two. Hold on. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, Ghost Quarter takes care of it. You're right. No more Blast Zones in Ben's deck. So at this point, it's basically Karn the Great Creator or Bust from Reagan. And even then, breaking out is tough. You mean actually dealing the damage? Right. Yeah, in the sideboard... Yeah, if he can, act, can he actually attack? Oh, okay. So the way that he could win from there is he has he sets up the Mycosynth Lattice Lock, All and right. then he just starts plussing Karn on Polium's lands, and eventually he won't be able to cast spells, and he'll be able to, and Reagan will be able to attack under and because he'll start bridge. drawing cards. Right, right. Well, there's still Bottled Cloister though. Oh, but then Polium will deck before Reagan does. Are Are we sure Reagan drew a lot of cards off Endbringers? Well. Oh, goodness. Oh. What a mess. All right. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Liquid metal coating from Reagan. Yeah, it does have me wondering if there's another card in here that gets him out of it. He can get Crucible out of his sideboard and bring back the Blast Zones. Ooh. 
once he has the game locked out with Karn. He can get Crucible, bring back Blast Zone, start blowing up the things that things going bridges. And now that we see Chalice on zero from Reagan, it's harder for Polium to set up one of those welding jar locks. Right. We see Ghost Quarter and Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Maybe. And they are going to go a bit longer. Now, the unfortunate side of this is that I believe they are about to run out of time if the clock hits zero because the match is complete. We are going to go ahead and wrap up the round so we can get to round number nine. My thought here is that Reagan has the advantage. It is, it is very close, and it basically comes down to Reagan finding copies of Karn the Great Creator. Right. Yeah, it can go either way here. Because, honestly, if Polium finds a copy of Narset, the game is over in the other direction. Because he just needs to find a puzzle box to go with this bottled right. cloister, and then the game just runs Reagan it's can't over win. at that point. Yep, then it's a lock. So really, it's just both players kind of frantically drawing towards their I win button. A weird situation. But they, that match is going to end in a draw. So it is going to be a day two lock for Aiden Breyer, Will Pulliam, and Robert Stanley. Playing playing to a draw here for Ben Reagan and Will Pulliam. Reagan and his teammates Ru Ruben and Nicholas Del.